Okay, so learning goal five is all about adding. So you're going to be adding decimals and you're going to be adding really big numbers and we're going to use different methods that will help you with and without regrouping. Okay, so write that in your notebook. And there are three different methods that you're going to use to add. And you don't need to write what's on the screen right now, but you're going to write the names for them and an example problem to go with each. Even if you know how to do them and you prefer one method, we just want you to have something to be able to go back to in case you forget. Mm -hmm. So those methods are new groups above, new groups below, and the subtotal method. So the first method we're going to focus on is new groups above. And this is the one that you probably see the most often. This is probably what your parents learned when they were in school. I know it's what I learned. Um, this mm -hmm. is what you will typically see. So the first step when you've got a problem, and again, you'll write this problem down. You don't need to write it. We're, you're going to see in a sec there's like three different versions of it that we show. Just keep it on one problem. Um, so 769 plus 584. So they're lined up correctly. We've got the ones and the tens and the hundreds all lined up together. So you add up the ones column first. So if we add up 9 plus 4, we get 13. Well, I can't just put 13 down below. I have a new group of tens. So I put my new group above the tens column. Then our next step, and this is what I mean, you don't have to write this whole problem again, just add this to what we just did in step one. Um, so this is what we had before, now we need to add up the tens column. So I add up six plus eight, but I don't want to forget, I have to also add up the one on top. So that gives me 15. And again, I can't write a 15 down below, I have a new group of 100. So I put my new group above, and then our next step, once I'm here, is I add up my hundreds column. So 7 plus 5 plus 1 gives me 13. Now, if you notice over here, I had this new group, this new thousands group, and we just in one step sort of pulled it down. But we wanted you to see that it, what that really is meaning is that there is a new group. And again, this is new groups above because you put the new groups above. <laughs> And the next method is new groups below. Yes, and this is probably a little less common, but some of you it might make sense to do it this way because, and we'll I think show that it. Blue oh, turned off. Sorry. Oh. Whoops. Okay. So looking here, new groups below, very similar to new groups above, but let's see what we do here. So once again, we're going to start by adding in our ones place, and we want to think nine plus four again is thirteen. So we have a three here, but instead of putting um, our new group up here, we're going to put it below. And some people choose to do this just because then they won't forget about adding that. Sometimes if it's way up here, people might forget. So this way, it's pretty hard not to remember this one right here. So now we have, for our second step, once again, sort of going through here, and now we have to actually add these up. So we have six plus eight plus one will give us um, 15 and we're carrying our new group once again below. So step three is going through here you're just going to add on but now we have this new group below here seven plus five plus one is going to give us our 13 so once again added the new group into the thousands place and we just dropped it down here. Final answer 1,353. Mm -hmm. So if you've done this right so far you've got in your journal a label that says new groups above and then you have an example problem and then a label called new groups below and then another example problem and now you're gonna have another one that's called the subtotal method. Now if you find that you are one of those people that putting those new groups above below it just confuses you and you're forgetting things this method will work for you. Okay, so this is called the subtotal method, and I'll show you. There's two ways to do it. There's left to right, and then right to left, which I'll do in a second. So again, we've got the same problem. This time, if we're starting with the left side. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I never, ever add starting on the left, so this is mm -hmm. a little weird. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to look at my hundreds column, because they're all lined up. So 7 plus 5, I know is 12. So I have 12 hundreds. So I have 12 with my two zeros to show that it's 12 hundreds. Now I'm going to move into my tens column, so 6 plus 8. Notice I'm not having to mess with any of the new groups. I'm just adding the 12 right there. Mm -hmm. So 6 plus 8 is 14, and then I have my zero. I have 14 tens, which is 14, ending in the tens column with my zero. And then I add up my ones. 9 plus 4 is 13. 
So these are the different subtotals, which is why it's called the subtotal method. And then when you finish, you just get the same, you just add them up. So you don't have to worry about any new groups. Okay, so this is the subtotal method from left to right. Now, the subtotal method from right to left is uh, basically the exact same thing, only you're going from right to left. So you start with the ones, 9 plus 4 is 13. Then you go into the tens, 6 plus 8 is 14 tens. Again, it's really notice that I'm saying it that way, 14 tens. It's not just 14, it's 14 tens. I'm in the tens column. So I've got to make sure that I write that right over here. You're going to get the wrong answer. And then add up my hundreds. So 7 plus 5 is 12. I have 12 hundreds. So I add in my zeros here. And then again, you just add them up. And since you've already done the subtotals, there should not be any new groups. And you get the same thing. So that is another way to add numbers if you don't want to do the new groups. So again, you're going to have a couple of examples here. Um, so now is a good time just to ask yourself, okay, which method do you prefer? Now, if you need to, you can also look back in our math book, our mm -hmm. hardcover math book on page 103, and it shows you all those different examples again, mm -hmm. if that's helpful for you. Mm -hmm. Um, so now, you are going to do a problem now on your own, and you only have to do um, do it one way. So thinking back to those three methods, which way do you prefer, and you can go ahead and solve this problem. Yep, solve it, and then come back, and we'll move on to the next little section. So now, we need to talk about decimals and how we're going to add up numbers with decimals. So we have our friend, the Puzzled Penguin. And he so does confused. look very confused right now <laughs> because he bought a CD for $15 and the tax is 15 cents. So he thinks he has to pay $30. Is he right? What do you think? What do you guys think? I don't know. I, th I, I understand why he would say 30 because 15 and 15 is 30, but I mean, use your common sense. If you're paying $15, it's only right. like 15 cents. It's not going to get you to 30, so he's he's not right. right. So, I mean, just think about it sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so you don't have to write this all out and, and try to add it. You And sometimes you can just use your common sense and think, oh, no, he's only going to pay $15 and a little more change. Mm -hmm. so, um, when, so when you're adding decimals, you just need to remember you have to align the numbers with the correct place value. And mm -hmm. with our puzzle penguin, we're thinking dollars and then some cents. And you will want to do that when you're thinking about decimals. So for instance here, you're going to um, do just what puzzle penguin had to do. Mm -hmm. You're going to look here and you're going to add 28, but then you're also going to add 32 cents. What's going to be the answer for that? Yep. So pause it and try and answer it and then we'll give you the answer and see if you got it right. So, um, a lot of you probably didn't even have to add this up. You just knew right away, okay, we have our $28 and $0.32. Cents. Mm -hmm. Now, we yeah. have another problem. This one looks a little more complex. I mean, it's not quite as simple as a dollars to a cents thing. So, mm -hmm. if I'm looking at this problem, I can't just, you know, like mentally try and add the 56 or 20. It's no. too difficult. So, there's another trick we're going to teach you. Using our lined paper, only using it sideways. We all impressed with that fancy spinning paper. I know <laughs> you should be. All right. So when you have your paper, if you just want to like turn it sideways, you can use these little lines, these columns, as place value holders. So like each one, like I would put my decimal right on a line, and then have them like we talked about the symmetry around the ones. Just make mm -hmm. sure that you have them go around that way. So this example that we were just talking about, fifty cents plus $8.27, and I know ours is not perfect, just no. you get the idea. It was very hard to try and get it perfect on that <laughs> little computer screen. 
So if you line them up, you see our decimals are lined up straight, and each of these numbers would go in their own separate column. I'll just help you line it up straight. So go ahead and pause it now that you've had a chance to see how to rewrite it, and then figure out the answer, and then we'll come back and show you the answer and see if you got it right. <clears throat> so hopefully, after you added those all up, you got $8.83. So if you did not, maybe look back at your work and see, did you forget to add in one of your new groups, or what did you do, where did we mess up, but that was what we should have gotten. Okay, so once again, we're just going to give you a couple problems to do, and whenever you're working with decimals, you want to make sure they line up um, to the like amounts. Mm -hmm. Here, it's nice and easy. It's already lined up for you. So this one um, should be a little easier to to solve, mm -hmm. but please make sure to write it down correctly in your journal. Yeah, and you, that's another thing. If you don't thing. line it up in your journal, right? Even though we have it lined up here, you're still going to get the wrong answer. Yes, so it's so that's, very important to do. That, that is key: lining up and making sure it's not all wavy. Mm -hmm. um, then you'll notice here, though, we have it going across. So now it's your turn. You have to look at these numbers and decimals and line them up. Mm -hmm. Always start with the decimal. That needs to be like decimal on the line, decimal on the line, and then go from there. So could they actually churn their notebook sideways right now? I, I would. <laughs> so it please do. Yeah. And then we have one more for you. Um, just giving you a little more practice with adding with our decimals and making sure you line up the decimals, please. Mm -hmm. And again, it doesn't matter which method you prefer as long as you choose the one that you can get the right answer with. So mm -hmm. if it's subtotal, then use subtotal. It really it does not matter to either of us. Nope. What matters is that you do one that works. So yes. good luck. Tonight.